Hey folks, welcome back. This video is one I hope doesn't become part of a series because it's on garage door physics and repair. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how garage doors work lately, mainly because mine isn't. Uh, I've got a busted torsion spring up here, so I figured I'd take the opportunity while I'm fixing it to talk you through how these things work. They're pretty cool, let's check it out. At the sides of your garage door, you have these tracks with little wheels attached to the garage door that ride in the track. So looking at it, you might think that it's driving up the track using those wheels, but it turns out those are just a guide. The real action happens back here. Hiding right here next to the garage door is this steel cable that goes all the way down to the bottom. And if we track it all the way up, we see that it gets wrapped around this pulley. Now that pulley is attached to this shaft, which goes all the way over here to the middle where the springs are and where the motor attaches. Starting at this bracket, we have a connection to this arm that goes up and grabs onto a chain. That chain runs to the garage door opener motor. And so that provides some of the force necessary to lift the door, but not enough to lift the entire weight of the door. The rest of the force comes from these two, or I guess for me right now, three, torsion springs. This big torsion spring is connected to a fixed point on one end, and on the other end, here, it's connected to this bar underneath. Now, that's important because that bar, remember, goes to the pulleys at the two ends. So when the pulleys turn, that also causes this bar to turn, which causes the spring to become twisted or untwisted. Now, the pulleys are set up so that as the garage door comes down to its resting position, its closed position, this is going to get twisted in this direction and the way that the spring is wound, that means that the spring is getting tighter and tighter. Now a spring won't tend to stay in an over-tightened or over-loosened state. It'll go back to its relaxed state, given the opportunity. Uh, and it turns out, we know from Hooke's Law, that uh, this spring is providing a force to this bar in the direction that will tend to unwind or loosen this spring back up. Now, the direction that does that is turning the bar and the spring in the opposite direction. And since that bar is attached to the pulley, that also provides a force through that cable upward on the door. So as, uh, as we close the door, it tightens the spring. We store some energy in that tightened spring. And then when it's time to open the door back up, we get a little bit of a nudge from the motor, but the bulk of the work is done by these two springs here. Uh, lifting that back up and changing that spring potential energy back into gravitational potential energy. Now here's the really clever part of this design. If you imagine that this chain represents the garage door, right now we're just a little bit of the garage door is upright and most of it is up on the horizontal part of the opener or of the track. There's very little weight that's hanging down here and so it wouldn't take much force to lift it up. But if we pull this down a little further, we have more and more weight hanging down. And just to illustrate that it's more weight here, pull it a little bit further and there we go. And so you might think, well, gosh, shouldn't the motor then have like this really widely varying range of forces that it has to apply to account for that changing weight? But actually it turns out that no, it doesn't because Hooke's Law says that the biggest force from the spring is gonna happen when the spring is wound the tightest. And when is it wound the tightest? Well, when the door is vertical, when most of the weight is being lifted by that spring. So the spring provides the biggest force while there's also the biggest weight that it has to lift. Pretty cool system. Now we gotta fix one. Each of these springs works roughly equally. So we can figure that the amount of energy stored as spring potential energy in the two springs together is about the same as the amount of gravitational potential energy that the door has when it's fully upright. So if I had all that energy released very, very quickly, it'd be equivalent to having, well, half a garage door dropped on me from nine feet up in the air, eight feet up in the air. So 
we don't want that. We want a nice slow energy release. Fortunately, we have some clever physics in here for unwinding this. Uh, saw these little bars that get stuck into holes here, and there's four of them around here, so you can do it one quarter turn at a time. And so I'm just gonna put that all the way into the hole and give it a little bit of upward force. Remember, this thing is gonna, is gonna has been wound around this way. Uh, and so as, uh, as I release these screws that hold it in place, it's gonna tend to wanna come back toward me here. So I'm just gonna get a good hold on this before I release this screw, uh, this bolt rather, um, and I'll just be ready to, uh, to take on the weight of that spring. Now they've got them every quarter turn here. So I'm just get it positioned. I'm ready to let this off slowly. I can already tell that as the spring gets unwound, that force that I'm having to apply here, the torque from the spring, is getting smaller and smaller. So I'm past the really scary part already. That being said, still don't wanna mess around with it. Okay, so the tension on that one has been released and I am very sweaty. Next step. So here I am removing the fixed end of the two springs so that the bar can slide uh, and then taking the pulley off of both sides of the bar so that I can remove the broken spring entirely. Well, it would seem that this is an official home repair project now. Here is the part that I just took off. And here's the one I bought to replace it and they are nowhere near the same size. So, apparently this video is sponsored by any hardware store except the one where I told the guy, yeah, I already measured it, I know which one I need. To a different store. And so finally with the right spring, I go to reattach this, get them connected in the middle into the fixed point, uh, and then start winding the springs, making uh, sure that the, the pulleys get the cable seated properly and going back and forth checking the alignment on those things. It's a lot of trial and error and sweat and cursing and the fast motion is a much better experience. Well, seems to be working now. I uh, did actually screw up after the first attempt. Uh, there's the pulleys on this side, the cable didn't get quite wound around right, so I ended up getting wrapped around the axle and I got to start from scratch, but we don't need that in the video. Thanks very much for watching. If you learned something about physics or garage door repair, uh, please subscribe, give me a like, share this with somebody you think would need it. And uh, just a note on the garage door stuff, This is a huge amount of energy. Uh, and so I would recommend that unless you feel very confident with this sort of thing, just hire a professional to take care of it. Don't, don't put yourself into that risk if you don't feel confident with it. Thanks again, folks. Take care, we'll see you next time.